Good morning. Today we will discuss another molluscan group that is known as Gastropoda. Now, Gastropoda, the name come from two words. If we divide the uh, total includes gastro, that means the gastric mass, that is the fleshy body itself. And the second part, that is the pod, which is come from uh, the word podos, means food. That means this group of animals use their gastric mass, the fleshy body, as their locomotory organ, as their food. So from that, these group of animals are known to us as gastropods now in gastropods the entire lower surface which is the uh, flat soft fleshy mass as you can see in this picture on this fleshy mass the animal creeps by some small scale waves of muscular movements so with the muscular movements they create some kinds of small waves and through which the gastropods moves in the forward direction now one important feature found in gastropod is that gastropods have true head and this head part is usually equipped with tentacles here you can see these uh, long linear things eyes well developed more or less well developed eyes and other sense organs but although gastropod have eyes but their eyes are not so uh, prominent by which they can uh, distinguish their enemies or any other object but they have a eyes which is not so well developed so they have gastropods have uh, proper head or true head uh, with tentacles eyes and other sense organs and rest of the entire visceral mass that is their digestive system gills all these resides in the dorsal part that is within the more or less within the uh, hard protection cover within the shells so gastropods basically move or use their locomotory organ uh, that is the ventral flat part through which they move from one place to another now gastropods commonly known as snails or slugs The class Gastropoda, which falls within the group Mollusk, that is one of the most largest and diverse group. If you just look at some uh, numerical figures, there is about 70,000 living gastropod species currently described from the earth and about 50. 15,000 fossil species are already reported from the ancient time. So you can have an idea that almost near about a lakh number of species incorporating both recent day and uh, ancient time gastropods are till date reported. So among the different animal groups uh, gastropods are the second most diverse groups after arthropods now gastropods can live in any kind of environment mostly they are found in aquatic and aquatic means they can live in uh, marine saline water 
they can live in lake water they can live in fresh water like river in ponds as well as gastropods are also found in land that is they are also live successfully in the terrestrial environments gastropods mostly have their gill structure by which their respiration can, was done but those gastropods which live on land they have adapted a different kind of respiratory system for which they need lung so all the terrestrial gastropods instead of gills they have their modified uh, mantle into lung so that they can breathe in the land or terrestrial conditions in contrast to the bivalves in bivalves we know that they have two distinct two separate valves whereas gastropods they are completely univalve that is a single calcareous material by which their shell is composed of and it is one piece and this calcareous shell may be coiled or it may be uncoiled but it is found that most of the gastropod cells are coiled now if we consider the or if you look at the habitat condition that is where gastropods live gastropods are benthic that means they are bottom dwellers the leaves above the substrate they are epiphonal however occasionally particularly during their intaking of food they may go within the substrate that is they may be infernal during some special occasions gastropods are mobile that is they can move from one place to another and they are not fixed they are not sessile they can live in marine fresh water and also land dwelling that means all these environments are home or habitable place for gastropods and they have adapted to every marine environment within marine condition they can live in hard substrate that is rocky condition they can live in soft sandy condition as well they they can live in muddy condition also so almost in all conditions gastropods are found within the nature now coming to the morphology of gastropods the first formed shell or if you consider this is a gastropod shell the first form or the oldest portion of the shell this tip that is known as the apex of gastropods like uh, what we call in case of bivalves as the beak that is the pointed portion of the bivalve in case of gastropods the pointed portion that is the oldest part of the shell is known as apex the opposite side of apex this part that is known as base so this is the farthest portion the farthest part from apex now as we know that all mollusk body all molluscan animals they are resides or their shell is some kind of conical structure some kinds of cone which is coiled around an axis now all these conical shells have an opening so like other mollusk gastropods they have also an opening of this conical uh, external shell and that opening which is used as the outlet of the soft mass is known as the aperture so here you can see this portion uh, sorry my drawing is not so good so this entire portion 
uh, is known as aperture that is the only opening occurred within this gastropod shell from which the soft mass which resides inside this shell they can come out and when they feel threat they will go inside now as there is a permanent opening within this uh, cone shaped gastropod shell and this opening may cause fatal injuries to the animal when they feel some kinds of threats by their predators or some kinds of inorganic things can hit them with this opening so the gastropod needs a apparatus by which they can close their shell so that the external affairs external things cannot go inside through this opening so thereby they use a calcareous plate this kind of calcareous plate which use as a door to shut down this opening and that calcareous plate is known as operculum so the opening of the gastropod cell is known as aperture and the calcareous plate which close the aperture is known as operculum now the aperture has two lips inner lip and outer lip if you uh, draw the axis of the coiling of gastropods this should be the axis of coiling of gastropods now within the aperture the lip or the portion of the aperture which is close to the coiling axis this portion that is known as inner lip whereas the portion of the aperture this part the outer part outermost part of the uh, aperture which is farthest away from the axis of coiling is known as the outer lip so all the gastropods they have their aperture which has two lips inner lip and outer lip now the inner lip here you can see again a picture showing the aperture the inner side of the aperture is known as inner lip whereas the outer side outer portion of the aperture is known as the outer lip now the portion of the inner lip towards the posterior side that means towards the apical side as we already know that the apex portion is the oldest part so that is the posterior side older side and gradually the shell grows towards the uh, growing direction that is the from the aperture new materials are secreted and the shell grows uh, in the growing direction so the portion of the inner lip occurs towards the posterior side that is towards the apical side is known as the parietal lip and the portion of the inner lip towards the anterior direction that is this lower portion that is towards the basal part is known as the columellar lip so inner lip has two parts parietal lip and columellar lip now the gastropod as i swills or uh, coiled around an axis that we known as axis of coiling now one complete rotation around the axis that is a complete 360 degree rotation around the axis of coiling is known as hold now gastropod cells they can coil in a single plane in that case we call them as plane spiral or in most commonly what is found that the gastropod coiling occurs with change in coiling plane in those cases the gastropod cells are known as 
spiraling coil or trochospirally coil. So these two terms are mean same. Now cuny spirals shells may coil in two directions. They can coil in right hand direction or they can coil in left hand direction and that depends on the genetic structure of the gastropods but in nature most of the gastropod cells are found to be right hand coiled now how did we know that the coiling is right hand coil or left hand coil so for that you have to keep one finger of yourself at the top that is in the apical part of the shell here you have to keep one finger and another finger at the base of the gastropod shell so with the help of only two fingers of yourself one at the apex and one at the base you have to hold the gastropod shell and the gastropod cells are oriented in such a way that the aperture portion or the apertural view is facing you that means you are observing you are viewing the aperture of the gastropods so in this condition if you look at the axis of coiling if you imagine the axis of coiling basically that is the line along which your fingers should be now with respect to this axis of coiling you have to look in which side the aperture is if it is in your right hand side suppose in this case here is the aperture facing myself that means the aperture facing the viewer that is my axis of coiling i am holding the gastropod with one finger at the apex and one finger at the base now with respect to this axis of coiling the aperture is in the right hand side of the viewer so these gastropod shells the coiling of these gastropod shells are obviously cone spiral that means they are changing their plane with continuous coiling and they are right hand coiling or it is known as dextrally coiled the coiling direction is dextral or right hand coiling the opposite figure in the same way if you you have to put one finger here another finger at the base this should be your axis of coiling and here you can see the aperture facing yourself that means the aperture facing the viewer and in this case the aperture is on the left hand side of the viewer so these kinds of shells are known as sinistrally coiled shell or the coiling is known as left hand coiling so by this way we can say whether the gastropod is dextrally coiled and whether the gastropod is sinistrally coiled so in terms of coiling the gastropod may be plane spiral when they did not change their plane that means the entire coiling happening in one single plane that is known as plane spiral gastropods when the coiling changes its plane that means coiling happened in different plane gastropods are known as cone spiral or troco spiral coiled and the cone spiral cells may be of two types the dextrally coiled cell and the sinistrally coiled cells apart from that there we found in nature some other kinds of uh, gastropod cells in which there is no particular coiling so those are known as uncoiled shell that's a haphazard orientation haphazard growth of 
uh, gastro board hard parts they are not following any particular uh, spiral motion around an axis so those are known as uncoiled gastropod cells but they are rare in nature most of the gastropods found are conispirally coiled and among conispiral most are textally or right hand coiled now the 360 degree coiling around the axis of coiling which is known as hole so for a single gastropod cell we can see that there are several complete 360 degree coiling that means there are several holes that means more than one number of holes and each of these hole of different gastropods each hole is connected or touched with the next hole by a line so take the example of this gastropod you can see this is the line along which this hole and this hole is connected with each other similarly for this gastropod this is the line along which this hole and this hole are connected with each other similarly next for next hole this is the line which is uh, or along this line this hole and this hole are connected with each other that means the touching line between two successive holes that is known as suture of gastropods now if you look at the shape of the suture that is different for different types of gastropods the sutural portion that means the connecting line between two successive holes if it is of v shaped as you can see in this picture in the sutural portion you can see a v shaped grooved the suture is known as impressed suture in this case the suture is of i shaped it is sharp very sharp the suture is known as grooved and in the third case you can see that there is no groove in the entire all the holes as it is looks they are mixed they are not distinctly separated on the junction line along which the two holes meet one another so they are almost fused with each other this kinds of suture is known as flushed suture now if you look at the entire gastropod shell the last 360 degree coiling that is the last hole that is the portion actually where the soft mass of the gastropod is housed so this last 360 is the portion of the gastropods where actually the soft mass resides that portion is known as body hole the rest of the portion apart from the body hole th this part that remains void there is no soft mass or nothing at all so all the other holes except the body hole in the posterior part that is known as spire so spire is a basically previously or uh, posterior vacant gastropod holes now if the number of holes within the spire is few that is almost uh, three or four then we call those gastropods shells as posi spiral and if within the spire the number of holes is numerous that is seven eight ten or maybe higher then we call them as multi spiral so in this case the posi spiral or multi spiral it is considered only counting the number of holes present within the spire 
that not include the body hold. Now, within the spine holes, the first formed shell, that is when the gastroboards appeared, when the gastroboard starts its life, the first form shell of the gastroboard shell is known as protoconch. The rest of the shell, apart from protoconch, that is known as teleoconch. Now, this protoconch shell is very much interesting or very much uh, important for a paleontologist because the in its early stage in its early life stage of gastropods all the gastropods are planktonic that means they are floater they are uh, freely floating on the um, water body aqueous body so in this planktonic stage in this early stage when the lifestyle of a gastropod is planktony the cells formed or the cells generated in this time is known as basically protoconch so protoconch represent this early stage of life that is this planktonic stage now the planktonic stage varies in different groups of gastropods so for those gastropods which have longer planktonic stage that stage is known as actually uh, uh, velija stage in terms of uh, life cycle so for those gastropods which have longer uh, velija stage they have more number of holes in the protocon that means their growth and all those uh, uh, things happening in the planktonic condition so they have more number of protocon holes whereas in those gastropods which have less time of planktonic stage that is less time of velija stage in which uh, or during which they live in planktonic condition they live in floating within the water body that means they have less number of holes within the protocon portion so number of holes in the protocon part indicates how much time the gastropod passed in its planktonic stage in planktonic condition now the gastropods which passed more amount of time in planktonic stage they tend to be more globally distributed because in the planktonic stage as they are free floaters so they can be easily moved by wind action or by wave action from one place to another place because for moving floating condition is easy to move them from one place to another with the help of natural currents but a for a organism if they have to move on their own foot along the surface that is almost impossible to uh, move from one continent to another or move from uh, move a long distance so the benthic organism they are not found to be globally distributed whereas the planktonic forms the planktonic uh, organisms they can move easily in floating condition from one place to another and they can float a long distance so they are showing more pandemic distribution whereas those organisms which are 
completely benthic, they are more uh, endemic. That means they are more restricted to a certain place. So, in case of gastropods, in their Velija stage, when they live in planktonic condition, the more and more number of holes that means they have in the planktonic condition for more and more time. So, more chance to be distributed in a larger area, that means more chance to be showing pandemic distribution. Whereas those gastropods which have a smaller time span in their Velija stage, in their planktonic condition residence time, they have lesser amount of time to float and thereby they have less chance to move to float from one place to another by the help of natural currents. So thereby they will show more endemic nature. So on the basis of protocon holes, number of holes in the protocon part, we can say whether the gastropod may show pandemic distribution or the gastropod may show endemic distributions. Although there are some other factors also which are also uh, take part for whether the gastropods can survive in another uh, ecological condition in another continental uh, setup or another ocean. And that may be a separate part, but initially from the number of holes in the protocon part, we can get an idea that whether that particular gastropods have the ability, ability to show pandemic distributions or whether they show endemic distribution. Now the question comes, the protocon holes and the teleocon holes within a gastropod cell. So first and foremost criteria to identify protocon, the entire gastropod shell must be preserved. In most cases, it is found that the earlier part, that is the apical portion, is broken off. So in that case, one may not able to recognize the protocon and the telecom shells. So if the entire shell, that is the starting from the first formed shell material to the last portion, that is the body hole, if it is completely preserved, we can distinguish protocon from rest of the shell with the help of certain criteria. Say for example, here you can see in this picture, this is the protocon portion. You can see the protocon portion, the gastropod starts its coiling from this portion, then coiling happened. Just look at the shell at this portion and ends in this portion, this arrow pointed portion. Within this entire part, you cannot see any kind of ornamentation. That means the entire gastropod shell is more or less smooth, almost smooth. But after this portion, you can see that there is a drastic change in the ornamentation. You can see these kinds of nodes these kinds of undulations throughout the entire portion or rest of the portion of the shell. So any kind of change in this, this type of ornamentation, any kind of change, so that may not be these kinds of uh, undulations there within the castropod cells in the telecom, but there may be other types. So any kinds of change in ornamentation found in the posterior portion of the gastropod cell that indicates that that is the division portion or that is the portion from where the gastropod starts his journey or the gastropod shell starts his journey as teleoconch holes that means the gastropod are now becoming 
benthic bottom dwellers so this is the first point secondly if the original shell preserved entirely then often some distinct color difference is found within the protoconch and teleoconch hosts so with the help of these color difference within the protoconch and teleoconch hosts we can also distinguish the protoconch part and the teleoconch part and the third portion there are there may be some kinds of depressed or grooved line in the junction between protoconch and teleoconch holes so where the protoconch holes ends and the teleoconch hole starts there may be some kinds of uh, line or some kinds of depression happened depression found to occur by which we can distinguish the protoconch part and the teleoconch part now as i as we came to know that a three complete 360 degree uh, rotation of gastropod shell around its axis of coiling is known as its hold and each hole is in contact with its next hole by a contact line or by a junction line which is known as suture now in this portion we studied the degree of involution that means the latter hole how much it covers its previous hole that is known as degree of involution now when the gastropod cells are loosely coiled that means the holes not in contact with each other or just touching the previous hole in this that case we call those cell as evolute holes cover a major portion of the preceding hole we call those cells as involute and in the last case when the last hole that is the outermost hole cover almost all the preceding holes that is no earlier holes are visible from the outermost part we are only able to see the outermost hole that is the body hole we call that kind of shell is convolute now in a gastropod shell the angle subtended at the apical part as we know that this side is the apical side basal side so this side is the basal side and the this side is the apical side that is the side uh, in which direction apex is situated so the angle subtended at the apical part by two tangents from the holes as you can see that is a cross sectional uh, view of gastropod shell so uh, if we take a gastropod shell and in the apical part we draw two uh, tangents in two sides connecting two successive holes so that tangent should connect at least two successive holes in both side so the angle now created in the apical side is known as its apical angle or spiral angle similarly if we look at the suture that is the connecting uh, line or junction line between two successive holes so you can see that this is the suture now you can see that this suture is basically an inclined plane so this inclined line or inclined plane makes how much angle with the horizontal line that angle is known as sutural angle here it is the sutural angle in this side this should be a 
uh, future angle this is the trace of future and this is the horizontal line so this will be the future angle now there is a very distinct difference between the cells in which the last holes do not meet centrally uh, in that case we found an opening in the basal part as you can see in, in this picture that is known as umbilicus uh, if we explain this thing in terms of ropian parameter say for example uh, this is the our axis of coiling and this is our generating curve so we know that this generating curves in case of gastropods that is the opening of the shell that that is it is the aperture so with time the gastropod cell grows and it coils the axis so after a certain time it uh, rotates 180 degree and now the grown aperture should be of this size again with time the aperture cell grows and the next grown aperture is of this size so like this way the gastropod cells coils around the axis now when you can see that this inner portion of the aperture that is uh, the inner lip particularly when this inner lip touch or keeps contact with the axis of coiling then you can see that like this way that is the aperture in the next 180 degree that will be the aperture in the next 180 degree that will be the aperture so you can see always the inner lip is in contact with each other and thereby successive inner leaves are in contact with each other so this formed in the next case it is like that in the next case it is like that so this formed an inner solid rod like structure which formed due to fusing of the inner lip around the axis of coiling this uh, dark red portions that is result as fuse of inner leaves of gastropods aperture and it forms as almost a solid rod like structure as you can see in this picture you can see this was a solid rod like structure which occurred in the axis of coiling portion and that formed due to fusing of inner leaves around the axis of coiling this rod like structure is known as columella so in this case distance from the axis of coiling is zero that is in all growth stages the inner lip is in contact with the axis central axis of coiling but when this condition is violated that means the gastropods aperture or generating curve becomes further away from the axis of coiling so that creates a conical hollow space in the central portion in the axis of coiling part and this hollow portion have an opening in the basal side that is known as umbilicus so in when a gastropod have umbilicus that indicates that the generating curve or the aperture of the gastropods is gradually go further away from the axis of coiling with continued growth whereas in case of gastropods which have columella that indicates that with growth the aperture or particularly the inner lip of the aperture is always in contact with the axis of coiling and for that the inner lip of successive holes are fused with each other and form this kind of solid rod like structure now the gastropods which lacks any umbilicus that means those gastropods which have this columella 
they are known as anomphalas whereas those gastropod cells which have umbilicus that means these kinds of opening in the basal part those gastropods are known as phaneromphalas now this opening in the basal part that may be sometimes unfavorable for a gastropod shell because this is an opening by which the external other organisms like the crab they can get access or they can firmly uh, fix their claw by incorporating one teeth within this opening within this uh, umbilicus so they can get a firm hold of the gastropod shell and after they they can crush the shell so to prevent that some gastropods deposit some extra calcareous material in this opening part of the umbilicus which is then known as umbilical callus or it is also known as simply callus so callus is an extra calcareous material to close the opening of this umbilical portion now coming to the directional sides of a gastropod shell as i already told you that this part is the apex or the fast formed portions of the gastropod shell so this is the posterior most portion of the gastro gastropod shell and this side is known as the is hosting the apex so it is also known as apical side the opposite side of apex which have base that is known as the basal side and also it is the growing direction that is the growth happens in this direction so it is known as the anterior direction now when a gastropods have its aperture downward side that is the apertural view portion that is known as the ventral side the opposite side that is the ab apertural portion that is known as the dorsal side but in case of gastropods this dorsal and ventral terminologies are not frequently used instead of we use uh, apertural side that is the side in which we can see the aperture and the opposite side in which we cannot see the apertural opening that is the ab apertural side a b apertural ab means away from aperture that is the opposite side of aperture so this is the ab apertural side the side from which we can see the aperture that is the apertural side so that's all for today's class hope you can understand thank you